Hey guys, it's Mark here from ETF Tracker and we are going through another in the ETF analysis series. This one is, if you can guess, to do with cybersecurity. So if you guessed hack, then you are absolutely correct. So we're gonna share my screen now. Let's take a look at hack. So we are jumping to the ETF snapshots and we are also gonna go full screen because it makes life easier and we can simply scroll down. So let's scroll down. We've got, like I said, there's 200 plus ETFs. There's 241 in the market currently. And there's even the ones that are delisted. So if it was anywhere over the time of 2017 till now, we will have the data for it because it comes from the exchanges. So here we go. This is Hack. Um, it is from BetaShares. It is in the equity global sectors uh, category. Those categories come from the ASX and CHI-X. So we get that from there. We've also got our own kind of categorizations for thematics, but that's in the main part of the app. It tracks the NASDAQ CTA cybersecurity benchmark. And you can Google that if you want to learn more about that. And holdings wise, it has 42 of those. Now the description, just a short one, Hack aims to track the performance of an index before fees and expenses that provides exposure to the leading companies in the global cybersecurity sector. Now you can go directly to the fund website and we can look at some more information there and Google Finance as well. So you can compare Hack to other things. We've got a Google Finance page under resources on ETF Tracker that shows uh, different groupings because Google Finance is really good at providing those ways that you can see um, share price performance indexed to each other so you can see which has done well from a certain point in time we don't have the miski esg ratings yet but we are adding those links soon so let's jump to the holdings actually for this one before we get to the data we can see there's got palo alto network so it's sorted by weight that's 6.3 percent accenture octa cisco crowdstrike cloudflare tenable holdings z z scalar z scalar and 46 percent of the uh, weighting is just in its top 10. So that's about average, actually. It might seem high to some, but the industry average across all the 200 plus ETFs that we've got, where we've got this data for, sorry, it's 180 that we've got it for. The whole market is 240. Of those 180, the average is 47% that the top 10 makes up. And you can see the smaller ones here as well. Okay, so let's go back. Let's take a look at the data. So 104% returns, uh, that is the monthly return from January, 2017 up until uh, August, <laughs> August, 2021, nearly caught myself saying September there. September data comes out soon. So we take a look at that tile and go into it in more detail. We can see the returns profile each month. It's mostly been positive, which is really interesting. And we can see what that cumulatively, cumulatively looks like. I don't think I'll ever get that word right. Well, um, net inflows, it has been increasing over time. So here's where it was when it was first starting. You can see that kind of profile. There were even some months where it was just net zero and how that thumb looks like over time. So it's $670 million right now. It is increasing, which is good. And even better, it is being increasingly traded. So we, we can see the number of trades, trade volume also on the rise and transaction value. Now, any of these charts that you've got here, we can increase it in size. So you can see more detail there and then go back to the report and a little bit of detail about transactions there just in the description. Okay. And then the bid ask spread, which is important. Um, Rask Australia had a really good video on that. So make sure you take a look at that. I'll link it in the show notes. So if you ever wanted to understand spread, I went over there, does a really good job. Monthly liquidity. Now it's always been kind of high for the newer ETFs um, whenever they come in and then it settles down to a certain level, but you do want to see high levels of liquidity and it's nearly at 10% and even in the teens more recently, and you want to see lower spreads and you, you not lower than liquidity. You, you just want to see spreads getting lower and you compare this to other uh, technology stocks or sorry, ETFs, but you definitely want to see spreads. Um, if they were as high as here, 0.8% or 0.4%, you want that going down because the spread is the difference between the buyers and the sellers. And the smaller that difference is, then it's going to be easier for this one to trade. Now, for those that are chasing income, dividend yield, the average distribution yield over time has been 6.3%, but the latest is only 2.8%. Now, I, you know, th there's only two months there where it's actually dropped down. So there could be something that's really happened there. Um, this is purely just pointing out the data so that you can look into it further. Um, and then it's increased its uh, FUM, sorry, it's, it's MER, not FUM. It was 
0.47% when it first started. It uh, went to 0.67% MER, and that's where it stayed recently. So there you go, that's Hack. And if you wanted to compare its holdings to others, you can click on the ETF holdings tab and look at some more information there. So anyway, I uh, hope you have a great day if you're looking at cybersecurity plays, and hopefully this has been informative. Please do like, share, and subscribe. See you later, bye.